Hello? I can still vividly remember those days I would catch a big marlin with my bare hands. Ha <laughs> ha! I don't normally talk to people who don't drink very well. I didn't know there was a rowdy place like this. <laughs> Trade with us, Papus. Don't trade with the ugly-looking otters! This is an exciting place! About Isabel the beautiful and rich. Spring, summer, fall, winter. It's summer all year in front of the furnace. I want to go out to sea. How much faster can I make money if I follow you, Captain?
If you want to get on a ship, you can register through me. I used to dream of being a sailor, pursuing the sun. Isn't that what every adventurer dreams of? Nothing is more dangerous than going sailing unprepared.
Uh, I just finished grinding. <laughs> yeah, I, I did one more hour. Because I fell asleep for like 45 minutes, like around 1 a.m. And I woke up and I was like, man, should I grind? I was like, yeah, I'll grind one more hour. Uh, new t new m limited series on Netflix, Waco, about the Waco shit that happened in the 80s. Mm -hmm. It's a show. It's a deep, it's a it's a re it's a real representation. It's a it's a it's a movie broken down into multiple episodes that's what it is so it's like it's like seven episodes like 45 minutes and it's just about the shit that happened in Waco with the FBI that compound with those children women and children no living there and shit it's pretty good wait hi who's that is that Balthacock is that who that is yeah why do you sound not young. Has it? Uh huh. It has. Yeah, I think it's your mic. I think. How old are you again? I'm 21. I'll be 22 in the November. That is him. His voice sounds a little deeper though. He must have ate butt. He thought he'd do it to you. Oh no, I started vaping last year, so. Okay, man, I was sleepy. I just, I just passed out of my chair. And then woke up, I was like, you know what? I'll do another hour. I'll grind one more hour. She's 59 now. Um... She hit 59. I got quite a few skill points. She's doing pretty well skill points, but I noticed that her health jumped a lot. Again, it jumped like 50 points. So her health pool with just the food, with just food, is 45, 50. It jumped from 44.90 to 45, like right, right, right at 44, 45, 40-something. 40 so I'm like, shit, it's gonna jump again at level 60. I'm like, not that I give a fuck, like, I'm just grinding, I'm playing for whatever, but that's a lot of HP. That's more HP than any class in the game. Every other class does, does the same thing. With caster, wizards are in a very good place. They're in a, they're just just as good of a place as a guardian. Yeah, in a different way. Yeah, it's just the flavor of the month that people are focused on. That's all it is.
Oh, these attendants towards leave much to be desired. They're whatever. Yeah, I mean, that's what got me back into the game. I came back during Christmas time. And I wasn't playing the game for the longest time, and then I hopped back in during Christmas time because they were giving out all that free shit. I was like, okay. Got my art. Hmm? I already sold that stuff. Easy money. Wait, you can sell that? You can't sell it on the market, but you can just sell it to a vendor and it gives you, like, I think a billion silver total. Wait, what? Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. I'm about to stop. I'm about to piss in someone's mouth for not telling me that. Wait till Charles logs back in. No, she's got my Ted armor from my, my regular. About she's to go feed my brother. I No, I have the scrolls in my inventory, in my Y menu. I have the weapons. I, I took it when I first started leveling her a couple of days ago. But I gave her my, my regular account armor, all my Ted armor, the Ted accessories. Whatever I had, I gave it to her. She's full Ted out, everything. I played Guardian when it came out. I didn't switch my weapons, but I ended up enchanting a bunch of Teds for her. And then I sold the shit. <laughs> I wasn't actually gonna play that class. It's fun, but I had to play my archer, and then I quit archer. I was an archer for a while, for a long time. I just, I don't know, archer just seemed too basic. It was so boring. It was just matching the same buttons over and over again. I used to dance with him around the thing because I could flow with him everywhere. He was fun for a little while. I know the class were fun for a little while. I ended up switching to lawn, so that's where I'm on right now. Yeah, she just got a minor nerf because she was she was broken, pretty broken with her mobility. I know, I've been mainly avoiding reading the patch notes on like the classes. I just play the class and whatever it's different. I just like okay. I feel like too many people make assumptions and like opinions just by like, oh, this class got nerfed by this thing, or they did this thing to them, now I gotta switch class. It's like, you don't. People just do that adapt. all the time. They are people not. <laughs> the Black Desert community doesn't do that, right, Art? <laughs> they don't do that. They get angry. People were rolling off Succession Ninja because they got nerfed a little bit because he was hyper strong. Oh, and dude, Succession still, Ninja's oof, fucking and ridiculous. Who, and people who play it still, it's still very, very good. So people are so stupid. I do not know.
I'm a, man, I'm gonna do that quest and get that gear and sell that shit. One billion. I need that. I didn't know you could sell that, man. Yeah, for real? The horse is on the market. No, there's n there's no horses. Well, like no tier six, sevens, or eights. They're all gone. No. When I was looking, I didn't see any T eights. I don't look at the dream horse section. I can't afford that. I sold my tet black star, but I didn't buy a fucking dream horse. Wait, you had a tet black star and you sold it? What is? It? Yeah. Why would you do such a thing? Because I was able to buy more gear with it.
Oh, that was the caveat. Ooh. <clears throat> oh. Okay, I'm confused about this fucking... <clears throat> The relics, like they. Well, no, they say, like, first collect relics that can be looted by defeating monsters in certain regions for the infinite HP and MP pot. You trying to do that? Yikes. But, like. But I'm like, I'm trying to figure out which one corresponds to which. So, all the stuff in Dragon is the HP pot, and all the stuff in Kama is the MP pot? Well, Paradolis, I could just get two characters 58 and grind the Kama quest line. It's not too bad. Karma scales drop like candy at Blood Wolves. Yeah, Blood Wolves is an easy grind. It's gonna be contested though, but it's already contested before.
Sure, caught it is. Nah, the nighttime grind for Sure Khan is kind of poop. <clears throat> sure, cock. I have ne I've never been out there, Ark. I had ne I've barely been to like half a dragon. <laughs> I'm a piece of shit. I mean, I've also been gone for seven months from the game. <laughs> Blood Wolves is like the grind spot for players who need to get money who aren't 250 AP or higher. Okay. Because it's like, it's an easy 100 mil an hour without any rare drops. And if you get rare drops, you can get somewhere between 140 to 300 mil in an hour. Before I stopped playing last year, because I just had to stop playing, Nordwars was getting, Nordwars was getting out of hand. Um, I grind, I, I did Achman. All I did was Achman. Achman, Achman, Achman. Yeah, Nodules was getting very frustrating. So I just I, I just couldn't play anymore. Uh, I started doing Node Wars after I left Capital, so That's a name I haven't heard in a long time, Arg. Well, that's cause Capital went to all shit. Remember Capital Arc? They really loved us. <laughs> Capital Love Nightwatch. Never understood those beefs. They were so weird. Never the whole Black Desert beefs and shit like that. All the drama that didn't really need to exist. Mm-hmm. Like people started it because they got they they were already getting bored. So they thought, let's make some drama, it'll be even more fun.
Oh. Grind this too fast. <clears throat> Lon is a fucking buzzsaw. That fucking class. Sure well, at the same cool. time, Sherikon Necropolis has. Very bad rotations. Isn't that that place that got the the NPCs that look like classes that attack you? Yeah, yeah, it is. Like one okay rotation, but that's about it. Blood Wolves has really good rotations. That's why everybody grinds it. And then, of course, you can just do Miramox or, um, shit, I can't remember the other place. Where do you get the L cars from? The L car what? Is the crystal? Yeah, it's, it, there's a place you can grind for them. It's, it's a really good money maker. No. Um, it's. The place under Hazra Ruin. Yeah. Unless you get the permanent entry, which you just grind there for. It's really not that hard of a place to grind, and the money's really good. There's this uh, guy, Psych, that. I used to well, play the game a lot with before I quit playing. 
recently because I, I mean I'm just coming back now I've been just AFK for the past month and a half again because nothing for me to do after I pretty much hit ult at everything and then trying to get tech accessories was just a bitch and a half I just buy them I'm not I don't play the we don't play the enhancement game in this guild anymore at our <laughs> we don't do that anymore I know, but Psyche would just grind that place. He'd get like a couple of L cars and buy Kron stones and click for his pins. That dude's almost full pin. Who? Uh, a friend of mine. I think the only pins he has left are his accessories, and he's not gonna probably have fun with that.
banging on the wires. This guy is a pelica dick. What the hell? Ghosts in the shell season? Hmm? What? Netflix just came out today. Ghost in the Shell, a series. Yeah. Yeah, brand new one. Yeah, I'm looking at the, the kind of like the ad for it right now. In Netflix. It's Ghost in the Shell. Uh. No, it's not a series. It's a it's an animated. It's animated. Very different animation though. Like the it looks like CGI. But it, yeah, it's brand new. It's not. It's nothing that from Jap nothing from China, Japan, wherever it comes from. No, it's brand new series for Netflix. No, my my favorite series is Tiger, is Tiger King. Fucking great. That's probably because Balthazar wishes he was the tiger dude smashing other dudes. Hell no. Nah. Carol Baskin killed her husband. The way that she was acting, saying that he like lost his mind and shit and everything, but all his friends were like... Yeah, the whole like, I'll threaten to kill you. And honestly, the dude liked Costa Rica. I bet he was planning on like, Going out to Costa Rica and living the rest of his life out there, probably. No, I don't think he got to Costa Rica either. But I mean, like, it's understandable why he'd want to escape her and hang out with some chicas down there, you know? Not some whack-ass white lady trying to control him. I just, I don't know, for the first episode, I just saw the hypocrisy and everything that was going on. I just giggled. Everybody kept telling me to watch it, and I was like, I don't really want to watch it. It looks stupid. And I actually just watched it. And I was like, yeah, it's still pretty stupid. You're like watching that guy though, it just doesn't like... I didn't think Joe Exotic was a real person, I thought it was like a made up reality show. I didn't think that the whole thing was fucking real, I thought it was fake, cause it just doesn't seem like that could happen in the real world. But I guess it can. Exactly. Like, she's saying save the big cats. Well, technically, if you're taking those cats, you shouldn't be holding them on, like, yourself. You should be either giving them to an actual institution or figuring figuring out a way to release them in the wild, which usually you need to give them to a zoo because they actually have the methodology to release it. Yeah, animals back into the wild. But she's like, oh, no. Save, big cat rescue, save the cat so I can put them in a fucking cage and watch them all. Like, dude, you're just like the queen. She's the queen of crazy cat ladies. I don't know. I feel bad for that person that lost the arm, too.
I know, she probably, like, blind faith is like, it, it exists. People do some whack shit because they think that what they're doing is great and then I'm getting fucked over by a guy who thinks that he could be famous. Fuck it, I'll take, I'll take, uh, Joe Exotic over to Governor Inslee. Any day. What? No. I don't live in Ohio. I live in Washington. My governor's a fucking dipshit. Except for Cuomo. I like Cuomo. He likes to see, he speaks his mind. You need governors like that who aren't afraid to talk shit to the president. Dude, George's governor is a fucking moron, though. <laughs> he's like, he's reopening Georgia, but listening to his press conferences, he doesn't, it's like, the most rich Savannah Southern accent you could expect, and he's just talking out of his ass. I don't think he knows what's going on. I don't know, I just thought, like, the facts of a fear campaign right now going on with this virus and everybody, like, freaking out about it, but I live in one of the early epicenters, like, I live in Washington, near Seattle, and you gotta keep in mind, they're basing it off counties. I think King County has 7,000 cases. Do you know the population of that county, yep. which is Seattle? Yep. 2.3 million. 7,000 cases out of 2.3 million people who live there as of 2019. But I mean, even with testing, like, everybody's freaking out in the, that county, but I'm like, mostly, I, I deliver pizzas right now. I still work. I'm considered an essential worker in my state. I have met, yeah, I'm, I'm still essential, yeah, because food delivery services are essential. But I have delivered to probably over 500 different people in the last month alone. I, of course, see some regulars. I, I've had some no contact deliveries, but those are far and rare in between. We do, of course, you know, some of them do the social distancing stuff, but I have hand sanitizer in my car. I don't wear gloves. I don't wear face mask. I have hand sanitizer for when I touch cash, but that was standard even before this whole virus shit, because yep. if I touch cash, you bet your ass I'm fucking sanitizing my hand. Especially, like, when I smell the cash and it smells like cigarettes. Yeah, I'm good. Off the fucking ground game. But even then, like, if. With the amount of people I've come in contact with, and the whole, like, oh, you're supposed to be social distancing and shit, there's so many people I've also delivered to who don't give a rat's ass about social distancing at all. And I'm still healthy as a fucking ox. <coughs> So I'm just like, well, whatever. <sighs> you know, that there is a chance I could be, but... That's because we apparently already got infected with it. Yep. Yep. I mean, like, the only thing I could understand is, like, I did get sick early on in the year, but, like... Well, I mean, every actually, no, see, that's what like, I tried to tell it to my girlfriend, because, like, I was still working at Domino's at that time, and I got sick, and so did, like, seven or eight other people, but we, like, some of us kept working, because we weren't as sick as others, but some stayed home, but, like, one person came into work sick and got, like, other people sick, and I ended up getting it, but I only ever called out, like, two times when I worked for Domino's for the year and, like, three months I worked there. I came into work when I was sick. I think I didn't go in, because... My throat was so sore that I could barely speak. That's why I didn't go into work, because I said I cannot function as a manager. I can barely even talk. 
and I caught shit for that. That's why. That's why I stopped working for Domino's because I was catching flack because I was like, if I told them I was unable to perform my job, they would be like, oh, that's stupid. Just a sore throat. You should be able to come into work. I was like, oh, jobs for places like that or uh, chain franchises. They have bad management at upper levels above store levels um because yep. my sister used to do that and it's the same thing yep. it's and i it's it's bad management it's just simply bad management bad leadership styles that's been passed on to whoever's above you and whoever's above that person it, it's all that's all it's the same thing in the military it's always it's 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 really bad leadership uh, i mean i work for a local business now so i'm happy where i am Yeah, I like. Dude, yeah, the 21, like, there's a 21 and only uh, pizza place where I live called Wicked Pie Pizza, and they started delivering too. Although, I think they need some help in their advertisement section because when you have a car topper, it's meant to be simple, easy to read, and advertising your pizza place. Like Domino's, when you see that Domino symbol or that Pizza Hut hat, you know that that's them. Like pizza time, we have our, it says pizza time, which is what I work for. And we have our phone number without, of course, the area code, but we have the phone number and pizza time on it. That's all you need. But they have like a fucking pizza printed on it. It says Wicked Pie. They have a bunch of fine print and like some fucking number. And I'm like, that's too hard to read while somebody's driving by. It's too much. But I don't know what kind of what they offer for people who work there. It's like it's like a bar slash pizza place. So I don't know what they offer. This is they're not a standard pizza delivery service. They don't usually deliver. Um, but like I get five percent commission of every delivery I take, plus cash tips. It's actually really not bad because like the local hospital here has an account with my pizza place. So the actual hospital. Not, like, nurses, when I worked at Domino's, nurses and some doctors would order from Domino's. But, like, there's an actual account with the hospital that goes to our pizza place, and they usually order $230 worth of food. So you get that commission, which is, like, $20 alone, and then they also give you a $30 tip. So, like, when you take a hospital order, it's, like, a $50. Yeah, I mean, the hospital doesn't order right now. But... We also have uh, takeout, like little takeout menus that we deliver with every order. So every time you order pizza from my place, you get a little takeout menu because that's proper advertising. So there's um, the hotels near us have our menus because people from the hotels will order. That's actually, I, I, I don't know, I'm wary of hotels now because when I was out delivering a weekend, like a day ago, so like eight, nine days ago, my car got stolen. While I was on a delivery, so I kind of don't like hosp or hotels now. Yeah, it got stolen while I was out on a delivery. During this whole coronavirus shit, somebody stole my car. Fucked up. Yeah, but somebody stole my car. But like, yeah, hospitals have our menus, and then... Of course, uh, there's this one place, it's like a uh, trucking stop, or, well, it's Swift, so, like, they do, you know, there's a bunch of truckers, it's their lounge, but one, I guess one time, a trucker there decided to order from our place, and we would always bring a menu, so one menu would be there, and now there's just a thousand different menus there from us, so, like, all the truckers there will always order whenever they're in town from pizza time, it's, it's such, like, and they tip good, truckers tip well. Like, to me, tipping well is at least a $5 tip. Because anything above $5 is out of the ordinary. But apparently, uh, my brother still works for Domino's. Apparently, Domino's is still doing better than us, but who cares? <laughs> Cookie brownie. Marble cookie brownies. 
Yeah, but you see, here's the thing. My pizza place, we deliver cheesecakes. And ice cream. We have a very large selection of Ben and Jerry's ice cream. We also sell briars. <laughs> we sell briars, Ben and Jerry's. We sell little cheesecakes. You can get the Cinnabread. Uh, we have like six different flavors of wings. We even have ribs. We sell ribs. Uh, local pizza places, they're just the pizza and the food they offer is just so good. But I, I'm not going to be doing this whole pizza food thing for a long time. I'm trying to get out of it. My other career thing has been put on hold because of the virus. I got through most of what I, I needed to do. It's a, it's a very touchy subject. Most people... I, it's... My brother-in-law told me to do it. He's been pressuring, not really pressuring, but suggesting I do it for the longest time. Most people are like, why, why, why are a lot of my coworkers ask me why? It's joining the military. It's not like I'm going to be in there forever, but my brother-in-law is currently still in the military and it's helped him out of the situation he had to be in because he grew up in Compton and it was either live in Compton deal with that life or join the military at the time I mean he's a combat medic works in the ER right now and uh, he worked at the ER here at JBLM and he's over there in Korea right now he did work in the ER a little bit but now he's stuck on a base checking people in if they have the virus shit like that. Yeah, he has to... He, he's still technically mission essential. My sister just gave birth, though, so he doesn't have to work right now. Which is good. Funny, my sister... My sister's daughter, or can now, or my niece, can just say when she's older, I, got, I was born during the coronavirus. <laughs> Gave birth during the coronavirus pandemic. <laughs> oh yeah, she had to she had to use a Korean doctor, and she said it was like her, she said it was super painful because she gave birth here in America. And then she, uh, at Madigan, and then she went over to Korea with my brother-in-law, and she just gave birth there. And she said it was very painful, because he, he did something wrong. He also tried to tell my brother-in-law, who's worked in the ER and been in the hospital for at least eight years now, like been in the hospital setting, to leave the room. And my brother-in-law refused to. I was like, it's kind of weird to tell the husband to leave the room during a birth. It's like the wife doesn't want him to be in there, like... I think the doctor actually has the power to say anything about it. But I don't know, Korea could be different. I don't know if they- I think they were in a military hospital? I can't remember. I always woke up one morning and saw that my sister gave birth and I was like, ah oh, shit, another niece I have to buy gifts for. I don't know. 
We kind of just stopped paying attention to all that shit. I did a Vietnamese girl now, so. Well, my brother-in-law suggested I do in the military. Like he's, they gave me MOS options that I could do for my jobs, and I, uh, I just made a list of ten that I could potentially be interested in doing. And my brother-in-law just pretty much went off the list and crossed off the ones that wouldn't give me any college or work experience, technically. Because most people, they go in like the army or something and they pick like an infantry role or something like that. And that really doesn't translate to anything post-military. Oh, Unless you're doing security contracting or stuff like that. Most people don't do infantry. I would tell you that much right now. Because um, when, I, when I was at MEPS, you know, 21 years ago, um, damn, it's been that long. Fuck. Um, there wasn't that many people signing up to, for the infantry. Um, it's kind of random, to be honest. Like, and it also depends on your um, your ASVAP score, what's available to you. So, if you get a really good score, then you have a lot of options um, to do whatever it is that translates into some good, you know, civilian job after you get out. Um, so yeah, so I I was an infantryman, but I went in there looking for that. Um, that was what I wanted to do, and then that led me to other things um, in there. And then after I got out, I got a security contractor job, you know, in Iraq. And I was making a lot of money, so that was my path. I'm not I haven't worked in Iraq in two years. I got hurt over there. Um, and I had to take the insurance company from my job to the court, not the court, I had to get a lawyer and I won my case and they gave me a big ass check and so I'm chilling right now until I move down to Tampa and become a police officer down there. I almost, see, okay, so I scored fairly well in most places other than math because math has never been my strong suit my my best score was word knowledge because i took the army as fed so skill technical and word knowledge were my two highest scores because i was a 101 in skill technical and i think 106 in word knowledge yeah you know how you improve your score on that because when i first took it the asvab when i was 19, 20 years old. I didn't score super well. I passed it and everything. I didn't score super well. I mean, I got the score I needed, whatever, to be an infantry. It's like you need a high score to be an infantry. That's oh, no, you don't. You need, I think, a 35 is minimum. Yeah, that's more of a physical job, and your the personality type has to be right for it. Um, it is technical, but it's, it's just different. Um, but when I did, I took it again years later for something else that I was getting into. Um, that I needed, a, I needed to have a 110 GT score combined. And all I did was I studied for one month. I bought a book from Barnes and Noble, I think it was at the time. Like I asked that for dumb money, dummies. I, I took that. I, I studied it, took all the practice tests, and I went from a pretty low score back when I was 19, 20 years old, to like a very high score and a 110 plus GT score when I took it. And I just studied the book for a month and took the practice exams on it. And fucking two, like I did two and a half times better than what I did when I was like 20 years old. And I took it again like at 29 because I was getting into some other things that I needed a higher score for. I think I that scored, my, my first time I scored a 64, which for somebody who's been out of school since high school, 
and haven't really gone back. I thought that was pretty well. Because most of the people I went to maps with were high schoolers, except for the, uh, you know, couple people going for officer commissions. So there were like two or three people going for officer commissions, and the rest of the people were like 18, 19 year olds. One 18 year old kid I, I was with, he was like, I'm going to be Force Recon, and I just looked at him. He's like the scrawny white kid who's short as fuck, and I was like, Everybody goes in. Everybody thinks, you know, you're at Maps Line and you're getting to know other recruits, and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna be Force Recon. And they think, they think that by saying that, by saying, you're you're, what you want to do or what you're signing up for, that that's who you are already. Nah, it doesn't work that way. And and soon enough. Oh a no. Lot those, a lot of those recruits find out exactly <laughs> what they're made of when they go to fucking infantry boot camp. And then they gotta go to recon fucking tryouts. Yeah, like my the job that I was originally offered when I was looking through the jobs was a four, it was 14G, which is the air defense battle systems operator, which has some really like the reason like it had a bonus, but you know military bonus. We all know how those how those work, but it, it's more the fact that it had it's hard to keep people in the military for that because the private contracting jobs pay a lot better for that field, especially yeah. for space companies. Because everybody wants to hire somebody who's adequate at shooting down objects from space and stuff like that. But I scored one point because okay, so I was only supposed to go to Meps and take the cat ass fab like thing that's thirty questions takes no time at all to see if you cheated or not. But their internet was down at Meps. So they couldn't receive emails or send anything out. They couldn't access the, the central MEPS database or anything. Because they use fucking Verizon for some stupid reason. And a state that has no Verizon internet at all. The two companies in Washington state that control the internet here are CenturyLink and Comcast. So Verizon has like nothing. I guess maybe Verizon has some cush military contract with the military but still the internet was down so i had to take the ass fab all over again so i scored one less for whatever the mechanical knowledge that i needed to be a 14g one point less so that job was already it was like scratched out the door on top of the fact that i need a waiver for something But almost, I mean, I almost feel like if you score within a few points of the job you're looking for, you should almost be like, there should be like a grace. Yeah, there should be a grace. But like they called, like they were trying to get a grace, but they called that station commander, and he said, nah, it needs to be at or higher. I guess because the job is, it like they apparently they give you this million dollar card that is required to activate yeah, the but machine. One or two points or three points below that. Is not going to make a difference in the grand scheme because all your all your knowledge comes from training from the school you're going to go to to get trained on that's where all your job knowledge comes from so this thing where if you need 100 and you get a 95 and they can't wave you in to me it's bullshit because in the grand scheme of life that doesn't mean shit. yeah that's true um, it doesn't all, mean shit, but all your training and knowledge is going to come from the training you're going to get at ait and then when you get on the job, that's when you're going to get all your experience. And that's when that's going to be more valuable than your stupid 95, the stupid five points that you were missing to get into the job. It, it, it's, it's, they keep it's, trying to push Cavalry Scout on me. Every time yeah. I like, every time they talk about it, they go, oh, well, a Cavalry Scout is available. I go, what? You mean the guys that wear stupid hats? Uh, no, they, they, don't, they don't do that. They, that's, 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 they, they don't do that. Um, they're they're not they got rid of the stupid men. hats they're not infantrymen they're very different from that but they're 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 a combat mos but don't I, you don't want to talk to me about that because um i moved on to other things after i was in tougher things while i was in so you know if i could be reborn again i would you know be a, i would go back to um getting into special operations um and sh shit like that for any of the armed forces seal teams um you reincarnate me i'll go back to doing shit like that again so i'm very 
if you're gonna go into combat arms and like you want to be a physical fucking savage you need to go special operations special forces green beret you need to get a contract like that because if not i don't see the point in going into combat jobs and that's my biased opinion because yeah i mean i definitely even with the waiver and corrective surgery wouldn't have the eyesight to do that stuff which is the waiver i need is for the fact like for my eyesight for my glasses so i have to pick a job for one thing i have to pick a job that is easily waiverable now because hey, i have the asvab score and they want me but they have to i have to pick a job that they can waiver and it's like something that won't require me to be in a combat role originally inside the military not everyone's cracked up with that stuff. Uh, most people are not cracked up for being infantrymen, things like that. There's no shame in that. People, I just got, I talk to guys, you know, and be like, yeah, I'm going infantry. I'm like, dude, like, relax. You, don't talk to me like that. I already did that and harder things than that. So it's like, there's no shame in guys you know not wanting to go infantry and wanting to do something technical it's better to go something technical because you will have a lot more job opportunities when you get out being an infantryman um it, being an infantryman you can you can yes you can do contract work after make a lot of money or you can go be a police officer and stuff like that um but it doesn't really translate you can go be a cop a SWAT guy doesn't really translate um, to anything else other than that um, so there's really no shame in guys not wanting to do that or not trying to be that but, I mean again if if people want to go oh, I want to go to combat I want to go to combat arms and be an infantryman you might as well um, it, because of my experience if you're going to go, go to the infantry and that's what you want to do not you just anyone you want to do um you might as well you might as well it might if i could do it over again i would go from the beginning and go into special forces right from the beginning do the infantry school then go to the tryouts then do the training get through all that i would do it much 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 younger um because that's where it's at that's where you come out of that a 10 15 year career in special operations you can do pretty much whatever the fuck you want the um, only special operations division technically my asvab score qualifies me for is psyops that's that's psyops rolls with psyops they roll with um with, uh, with, with a teams in the field um so yes they're not they're not special operations soldiers, but they roll with usually um, an A team will have, you know, a psyop, so a few psyop people with them. And you'll have women who are psyops because they deal with a lot of civilian um, mental shit. Uh, it's still a very tough job to get into, too. It's, it's like yeah, the psychological it's, part, but it's, it's very technical. You have, it's yeah, technical you, have to, you have to learn what I looked at it. traits. There was like you have to go through osa you know the military police basic training and then you have to go through like a i think it's a 10-day qualification and then after that you have to go through uh airborne school yeah there's a reason and you have to that. do sphere training and then you have to go through the 80 weeks of psyops training yeah because you're learning psychological warfare how to you know you, you get these equip these things you know there's a lot of stuff man i could go into but the reason why you go to airborne training in SEER school is because PSYOP personnel, female or men, get attached to Special Forces A-teams. And they have a, you know, a certain task they do. Obviously, they get protected by the A-team. Um, but you roll with, you know, fucking A-teams overseas. And if shit goes down and you get captured, you got SEER training to help you out. So, yeah. Yeah, I did. I just tried to not do. For me, look if you're not a if you're not a fucking if you're not a fucking super athlete type of dude um, that likes to carry weight and shoot weapons and tactical. Forget about combat arms. No one cares. 
I know I never actually went into like I, for me originally when I grew up I wanted to be in the military because my dad was in the military it was like so and my grandpa was also in the military but it was like more of a thing that I thought I couldn't do and then you know I just ignored it after high school and then I started to talk to the recruiters because they kept bugging me never really wanted to join the Marines everybody in my family has either been Air Force or Army and I've always wanted to be in some sort of capacity of either law enforcement or military, but not to the point where like I'm running around, you know, doing stuff, you know, running around with guns or it being infantry, stuff like that. I wanted to do things more. I'm not saying like infantrymen are meaningful, but meaningful to the point where I can actually assist people in other different ways. So like, you know, like I, even in the military, like doing a different job, I could at least assist the infantrymen or others in what they're doing. So that way the mission gets complete stuff like that. Yeah, so that's why that's why I've been looking at like career fields that, you know, in the military that allow me to have options outside the military if I have to leave. But also while in the military I, are decent jobs that allow me to be able to still live a normal life ish. I mean, I'm still in the military, but not have to be, you know, have my girlfriend worried about me constantly going out and, you know, putting myself in danger, stuff like that. Because I know that you still get stationed or in there, you still get deployed even if you're not in a combat role. It depends on your MOS, to be honest. I mean, yeah, some deployments here and there depending on your MOS, but if you're not, if you're not, again, overseas if you're not an infantryman special operations um, military police oh my brother-in-law um, told me not else? to do military police if, if you're not any of those things you most likely you don't you don't leave the compound wherever you're at that often to begin with um, unless you're like supply and then they do convoys but then they get escorted by military police or infantry units um, but if you're not any of those things, you don't really leave the compound. You're never in really any danger. Very, very, like, um, you're always in danger, but it's very, it's very small compared to you, everyone else who has to leave the compound and, and do stuff. But we're, we're not really at war anymore. So, there's not real much. I mean, I lived outside of the compound, compounds every day out raiding and patrolling. So, you know, but I had the personality type for that. So you know, uh, the I job I'm looking at right now is human resources, the 42A. That's a cush job, bro. You could chill. You could be married. You don't even have to. There's a lot of weird shit that happens in the military when you're married. But if you're home a lot, you don't have to worry about any of that nonsense. Um, and I don't think human resources really deploy. So you'll be at your home base a lot. So. There's that. I don't think they deploy. I think, it, depending, maybe a base might need human resources. You can get stationed somewhere. I think that's like probably the only thing that a human resources would get. You might, they might need a certain base, might need human resources soldiers. So they station them there. <coughs> I probably get stuck in like a MEPS office or something like that. Or fucking some just human resources office on base that deals with shit. Yeah, my brother-in-law said that if I can go for it, do it because it's nine to five, and you get the weekends off while also still being paid your salary. Yeah, you don't, you know, a life of a, you know, combat MOS. You know, it's like on weekends you're training, you're out in the woods and field training. You know, so I mean, yeah, I got a lot of weekends off and a lot of time off, but a lot of times you spend seven, eight days out in the fucking woods training. That's a long time. I mean, it's not a long time, but, well, nine or ten days without showering is a long time for me, but you take baby wipes with you. They do the job, they do the trick. And besides, by the time day three comes, you're used to everybody's smell, and you can't really smell other people, other dudes when you're training and sleeping in your, in your fucking sleeping bag, and everybody smells the same, and everybody has baby wipes and wipes their butt and balls and, and their armpits and shit like that. That's the life of an infantryman. And carrying weight and shooting and whatever so it's it's if you're trying not to get into that don't get into that get a cushy job chill at an office ac air conditioning you're good to go 
You know, I'm starting to think I uh, picked the wrong branch though, because like, I, I should have gone Air Force so I could just slide I my way into the, the I Space Force. I would have told you the same thing. I would have told you, if you're going to go Administrative, don't join the Army, go to the Air Force. I can always just get, change branches in the future. That's what I would tell people. If you're going to do something Administrative, Kush, go to the Air Force. Go to well, I, I can always just end up transferring into the Space Force, and I could probably get easy promotions in there, since so it's a fucking Space Force and nobody's really in it. Apparently, uh, you, if you're in the Air Force, I think starting next month you can actually transfer into the Space Force. Is that a real thing, the Space Force? Was it, it is a real fucking branch of the military now. Is that, it's a, is it's that a, a real thing, Ark? Is this, how, do, how do I not know this? What is this? They, they just had an Air Force graduation where they were like a thousand Air Force and Space Force uh, second lieutenants graduated. It's it's an it's an offshoot of the spa of the Air Force. I'm good. I'd still rather be. I'd still rather be a special operations soldier and do that kind of stuff. But I mean, if you're if you're like an administrative guy looking for easy promotions. Oh yeah. This the space force would be easy because there's nobody <laughs> in there, so right. you, you're gonna get to the highest rank and enlisted off uh, person can probably be if you do your things right. But I honestly I couldn't imagine what it would be like to be in the space force. Everybody'd probably be laughing at you, even the guys in the air force. Because there's no real point to the space force right now while we have nothing going on in space. It's not like we have a space station that. Yeah. I mean, we do, but it's not like in the movies where you you travel back and forth. It's a fucking Star Trek. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have that yet. We're starting a little early. <laughs> I wouldn't be shocked if the branch got subsidized or shut down under future presidencies. Be honest. This, this is a new thing under President Trump, so it, it probably will be subsidized back into the Air Force by another presidency, let's be honest. There's no real use to it. Oh, but the Marines are apparently getting rid of uh, their tank divisions and their military police. So. Why are they doing that? Who are they going to give that job to? Someone's got to do their military. That's that's police. that's what I thought. I said, so who's going to police the bases? You're going to get like the the Navy, maybe I guess. That's the only people who could be the MPs for them. But apparently, they're doing it because they want their force to be more of a fighting force so they're still gonna have you know strikers and lavs and amphibious vehicles but they're getting rid of their tank divisions so no more abrams for the marines and they're cutting and they're also cutting back on the amount of soldiers like the, the whole like future proofing of the marines plan that the general had was kind of interesting i guess they ran war games to see what it would be like and that's the reason why they made these decisions but it's kind of odd I mean, like, the tanks can be understandable if you want to be fast. Although tanks can help you secure something fast. I mean, you probably want vehicles that are fit for what you're doing, like amphibious assaults. You can't really use a tank in the water. Dude, infantry soldiers love to see tanks. Well, when I mean, a striker does its job, too. When in combat. I'll tell you that much right now. Uh, they'll figure things out. It's not like it's, they're not gonna do it now with tanks, but yeah, that, that, yeah, that's why I said they're probably gonna have strikers out there, LAVs, shit like that. When you're taking a village and you're getting heavy arms fire, and when your tanks show up and start pumping fucking those big ass fucking rounds into the things, and it takes the fucking attention away from you, yes, they're very useful. It's probably them, instead of them thinking about like a war in like Iraq or Saudi Arabia, stuff like that, they're probably thinking about yep. where the next war could be. American soil. Or uh, countries with more modern militaries, where tanks would be useful, but 
a tank destroyer like the Striker probably a little more useful than a tank. We're now fighting in China, and uh, they have a lot of fucking people. Like, a lot. But, uh, where, where else I, would I, war I, would be? I don't think they have... I mean, they have a lot of people. I think tanks aren't really the problem. If we were at war with Russia, tanks would be the problem. Because Russia has the most tanks in the world. Which is a little ridiculous, though. You need that many fucking tanks. They have, like, over a million tanks in their arsenal still. And that's just what they're telling people. So, they could probably have more. Because the United States has more things that they don't tell other countries or, the pop, you know, the public. I mean, that's just how it works. Supposedly, though, the population of China is getting shorter. So every decade they have to retrofit everything they use. Almost done with this hour here at Sherikon Necropolis, and then I have not gotten anything good. I don't think this even comes out to, a, to like 100 million silver. I think it's like maybe 40, 50 million. How does this fucking Agris Fever thing work? How do you get it? Oh, do I have to do an adventure log for that? What is it called? The Book of Marga Khan? Oh, it's basically just that you like using. Okay, so it's like using the gold item collection scroll. Oh shit! If it stacks with the gold item collection scroll, then fucking mirror mox. It must be a gold mine for people who grind there. They're performing a short, short maintenance on the central marketplace. No, I think they just shut down the marketplace. Maybe they're maybe they're tw tweaking prices after the fucking uh, whole fan wave and shit. No, it's just that like when you use the item collection scroll, the gold one, it gives you double the drops, so you get two times the drops at. Um, mirror Mox. So already a gold scroll there makes it super good. So if you if it stacks with the gold the gold scroll, then you should be getting like three to four of the drops instead of just two. Yeah, I'm just using a blue one right now, and I'm getting like three to four. To put a Lamalo killer.
But I mean, if it says junk item, I mean, like, the rare items aren't junk, so... Oh, there goes my hour. Yeah, I see, like, usually when I grind up Blood Wolves, I get better loot than this. Like, I'm only here trying to get the rare item, but, like, the loot is kind of garbage. I mean, I have 16 Dragon Fossil, but, like, it's kind of pales in comparison to... I usually grind Blood Wolves. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, I have two pieces of the knots. Or uh, whatever, the metal ornaments. I got, like... One plus five ores fit, Clary. I just get more enchanted items at Blood Wolves, and it, I think it's because the amount of mobs you kill at Blood Wolves, you kill more per pack. And uh, you clear them technically a little faster than Sherikon. It's just a, a more, like, I, I usually get about 40 to 50 million alone in the trash drops, so like 20,000 of the Blood Wolf pieces. Um, that's using a gold scroll. Without a gold scroll, it's like a blue scroll, you get like 12,000, like, no, it's around 14, 15,000. Normal grind, you can get like 12, 13,000. Because you're not getting like double loot. But I'm usually getting like a bunch of Kag Tanax, Akum armor, some rings. Well, Kag Tomb rings. Fucking those Blood Wolf blue rings drop like candy. Uh, I have the rune rings occasionally. Uh. Of course, I had I. You can also get the Manos Craftsman's armor there, which is like when you get that, that's a jackpot alone. I've had it drop twice. Sulfur. Ah. Yes, Polly's does have the. A lot of people grind polys too until they're like 240, 250 AP, but I, uh, Blood Wolves is just better income than polys. I don't know, like, polys just didn't seem like it was good money. But I've always been biased to one thing or another. Like, some people claim to get a fuck ton of money at Gahaz still, and I just don't see it. I don't get money there. I need to go back to the ruins now that I switched to Nuver from Kudum. That's right, Central Market is unavailable. Now the sea ruins, are, th that's fucking easy. Like, until you get to the super hard part, like the part where you're supposed to be grinding when you have pins. That, that, but the other part is, that's easy. It's a walk in the park. It's just not good money at all. It's really bad money. ridiculous to get there too. Yeah, probably okay if I didn't even look at it. Yeah, Sikria, I tried that to get the Tungard Ring, but I wasn't worth it. It's, um... Is it not on here? Pratuga, that's where I need to head back to. There we go. That's the name of the place to drop the Elkars. Cause I was grinding there with the Kudum, and that wasn't that bad. Uh, the grind there wasn't that bad when I had him. Although, as a lawn, with using uh, Succession, I need to chuck HP pots. Which is why I'm trying to grind for the infinite HP pot, because if I'm going to grind there, infinite HP pot would work quite well.
I got two pieces of the map, so that's why I'm like. I, I... It's it's more like RNG. Like you gotta spend a long time there grinding, but like as long as you keep grinding that same location over and over again, like my friend Psych, I was talking about with like the pins, he has two of each. Okay, so Tooth Fairy Forest. Why did they say Navarne Step on the patch notes? They messed that up? But, like, when I'm looking at Navarne Step, it doesn't have it in the loot table, and they said they added it in the item drop information, which I can see for Manshelm, and... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I can see Tooth Fairy, it's in there, it's in Manshelm. It's in... The Sherikon, which is it's under the other tab. So that's that's the interesting thing about it. It's like the other tab, which most of these items aren't that rare of a drop, like whom in the Makala drop commonly. So I'm, I'm more thinking like it's probably closer to an accessory drop. But You're gonna get the Blood Wolf item probably faster than Sherikon, just because of the sheer amount of ads, since it's in the other tab, and every ad at Blood Wolves can drop every item that's on its list. And there's so many different grind locations, like, there's one good grind location that will always be contested. Like, what I grind, that's what I used to grind to 62, because I wanted money and also to grind to 62, and it was constantly contested by people. I started a lot of guild wars there. Yeah, Tooth Fairy Force is the one that... Oh, well, Blackberry, what are you doing? What's up, baby kitty? The node. Yeah. Wait, what... What I have clicked on? Oh, this is, yeah, Abandoned Iron Mine, yeah, I can drop the Manos Crossman. And... The Sound Hill dish, wait, not, not... What district did you... Oh, no, it's... Yeah, I know, it's on the list. On, with all the other fucking armor in the game. That's, it's probably super rare with all these drops on its menu. The Sherikon grind doesn't seem appealing. That's the problem. I feel like... I feel like it would suck... No, I think... I think, I think you, you... Like, Sherikon Necropolis, like, spans down pretty far. Like, I'm in the Necropolis and I'm not even near where the symbol is. There's only like a, like one or two. There's only two actual 
like grind rotations that you can grind at that are efficient technically quote unquote I guess I will go do some rift bosses and then circle back to this
you want to get on a ship, you can register through me. place like this
Like a cup of milk, or would you like to milk it yourself? <laughs> 